Since 2004, when the movie I Robot, based on Isaac Asimov's short stories collection, published in 1850, was successfully released, many people have become familiar with the three laws of robotics and thought that somehow they apply to actual research on AI. First, a robot may not injure a human being or, through inaction, allow a human being to come to harm. Second, a robot must obey any orders given to it by human beings, except when such orders would conflict with the first law. Third, a robot must protect its own existence, as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second law. Are these laws purely fictional or somehow connected to the scientific development of artificial intelligence? Isaac Asimov wrote a wonderful book called I, Robot, and of course there was a, a film which I was delighted to attend the premiere, I, Robot, with Will Smith. Um, I, excellent film, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, of course the central basis of the storyline is that robots are programmed with the three laws of robotics. It's only the first one really is the, the, the important one, um, which you either read as a robot cannot kill a human or cannot harm a human at all. Um, and there are many people as a result that feel that uh, robots are so programmed or that that's what we should do. We, if there's any problem with machine intelligence, we just need to program the robots with Asimov's laws, particularly a robot can't harm a human, and then we, we don't have a worry. It, it's simple as that. Um, now, of course, in the film and in the storyline as well, that we do have individual ro physical robots, but then there is a central brain which controls their meaning their, their, what they do and, and what not and this central brain there there is a, a forced blip um, so that they no longer fully obey Asimov's laws and hence there are problems and issues and so on that's the storyline um, then Will Smith in, in the film can go and destroy this central brain uh, of course, we don't have central brains, we have networks, and Will Smith destroying the internet would be an almost impossible thing. Uh, however, that's not, don't want to ruin the story for those that haven't seen it. The important thing for this is Asimov's laws and programming. This is fiction, and I think if there's anybody out there who feels robots can and will be programmed with Asimov's laws, Hello, hello, this is a fictional story, wake up, come on, get real. It's a nice story, that's all it is. If we actually look practically at doing just that, no one robot in the world to date has ever been programmed with Asimov's laws. Even number one, never mind other two, number one rule never been programmed into a robot. Why is that? Well, it would be absolutely stupid. Even if you tried to program Asimov's rules into a lump of concrete, it would make that lump of concrete so expensive as to be completely a waste of time as far as lumps of concrete are concerned. If you then try and program Lazimov's rules into robots that are moving and interacting and have machine guns and have weapon systems, then it, it, you, you, know, you forget it. You're, you're talking of six gazillion dollars for one robot because it's got Asimov's rules, which making sure that if it's a lump of concrete, it doesn't fall on a human. What was that take in terms of sensors? Or if it's a robot, it doesn't actually harm a human either primarily or in a secondary way. Realistically now, you're looking at taking a drone pilotless fighter plane. The, the reason for it being in existence is that it blows people up and buildings up and fires missiles and weapon systems. And you would need so many mechanisms on it to say, right, before you fire this missile, you need to check that there's nobody within about three miles of where the missile is going to land. You have to make sure the missile does not go off course at all. You have to check. I mean, how is this? 
possibly going to happen? The, the, it makes the robot completely useless. Well, you're then going to send a message in saying, OK, in three days' time, I'm going to fire a missile to blow this building, so make sure you get out of the building. Oh, yeah, OK, we'll go, we'll leave, we'll come back after you've blown the building up. It's completely stupid. Financial systems, artificial intelligent financial systems now, make decisions on their own. And uh, some of those decisions can be to buy coffee from Brazil instead of coffee from Ghana or whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, th there's no thought there concept. Oh, yes, but if I change where coffee is bought from, there are going to be 200 deaths over the next four years because there has been a change in the financial markets. The, the cost of an AI system that checked that because it moved three shares from one company to another, that could cause somebody to be harmed in some way, and what harm means from that, would make the system a complete waste of time. It would never do anything because there could be potentially somebody who could not buy a packet of cigars that night because it's the person's shares have been moved and could be regarded as being harmed, or not harmed, I guess, if you take in smoking and cancer. The realistic conclusion is Asimov's laws are purely fictional. That's it.